Welcome to the Weather Insights Podcast. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. Today is June 17th. This is the evening of June 17th, our second podcast today. The reason we wanted to come on and uh, give more information is because as of 4 o'clock Central Time today, National Hurricane Center has updated this, this disorganized system we've been watching in the southwestern Gulf now. It is now a potential tropical cyclone, a PTC is what they're calling it. And uh, Jeff, PTC is just kind of a fancy, an another weather acronym for something that's kind of between a disorganized system and a tropical depression. But uh, this will likely become Alberta. It's still a 70% chance of developing into a named system sometime in the next 48 hours. And really our message is the same as far as the impacts. The impacts are very similar we can see on the infrared satellite that uh, there is a little more convection down there in the southern Gulf. But we see that convection spreading into the northern Gulf. And we started to see some of those showers and thunderstorms come on shore today here in Texas. But you can see that heavier convection down there in the Bay of Campeche. And Jeff, I believe they had a reconnaissance aircraft go down there and investigate that area today. Yeah, you can see the the recon, and uh, they did, they didn't find a whole lot. Uh, pretty pretty weak light winds, uh, under 15, 20 miles an hour. Uh, maybe some hints of a low level circulation down here. So this is this is why the designation of the PTC, the potential tropical cyclone, because there's just really nothing at the surface yet down here. Um, and and by designating it, this it gives the National Hurricane Center the ability to issue tropical weather watches and warnings for the coastline and so we're within about 48 hours now of whatever forms i'm here making landfall in northeastern mexico and so that did allow them the ability to issue that tropical storm watch from port o'connor down uh, into northeast mexico including all of the lower texas coast and so that was really the impetus if you will for for the potential tropical cyclone advisory that came out around four o'clock today um, interestingly enough, this all came out of Tropical Storm Bill back in 2015, which made landfall on the Middle Texas coast in June. Um, and back then, they did, the Hurricane Center did not have the ability to issue uh, watches and warnings ahead of something actually forming. And so we didn't get the Tropical Storm Watch and Warning for Bill until it formed and it was almost right on the coast. And so this has been an improvement in the hurricane forecasting program. Um, but it gets kind of weird with the terminology, you know, and, and, and like you said, the point is, if, if it's a potential tropical cyclone or eventually becomes uh, Tropical Depression 1 or Tropical Storm Alberto, uh, it's not going to make any difference really on the impacts up here on the upper Texas coast. It's called MS 91 L right now, and we are seeing winds out there at uh, 40 miles per hour, which, of course, tropical storm minimum winds are 30 knot miles per hour. But it, as you mentioned, it doesn't have the full characteristics of a tropical cyclone to get a name yet. But a lot of those winds, as we talked about this morning, are coming from that pressure gradient. You got the broad low pressure in Central America and the high pressure in the eastern United States. Uh, but the bottom line is it's it's really windy all over the Gulf right now. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen the winds increase and they will continue to increase as we get into tonight and tomorrow. We'll take a look at that here in a little bit. But focusing on the impacts a little bit, you can see the, the rainfall forecast. It continues to shift around a little bit. Now it looks like the maximum uh, potentially down along the mid and lower Texas coast, the coastal bend. So we're talking the Victoria, Corpus Christi area potentially with some of the maximum rainfall totals. I don't want to discount potentially here yet on the upper on the upper Texas coast in the Houston Galveston area. Uh, this is the type of situation where you get those bands, those feeder bands that develop and kind of move inland, and they can potentially train over a certain area, so they can kind of sit up and just move over the same area again and again and again. And given the air mass that we're going to have in place uh, over the next 24 to 48 hours. Uh, that could potentially result in some high rainfall totals. The, the good news about those bands is they tend to be very narrow in spatial coverage. So this is a type of setup where uh, one area could get four or five inches of rain and you drive three or four miles down the street and the sun is out uh, or you don't get a lot of rain in that area. And so um, we're just going to have to see here on this eastern flank, you know, the kind of the I-45 corridor westward. Uh, if we get any of that banding, and this would be really tomorrow afternoon and evening into Wednesday. And so we're not anticipating 
any significant rainfall tonight or early on Tuesday morning. But starting about noon and especially going into the late afternoon and the evening is when we expect uh, the heavier rains to start moving inland from the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and, and we're going to just have to watch and see how that banding um, and, and develops and everything. But you can see the expansion also here now into central Texas of a lot of rainfall. This, this potentially has the big story of being uh, drought busting rainfall out here in the Highland Lakes and the Colorado Basin, Lake Travis and those areas. Um, one thing we talked about this morning, and I'll say it again, this area is very prone to flash flooding. These types of rainfalls, these types of rainfall rates can result in very quick rising water out here in the hill country in southwest Texas. So if you know people out here, you're heading out here to go camping or hanging out along some of these rivers that are normally dry, the Frio River, the Guadalupe River, um, some of these places out here, be very, very aware of what is happening and what is happening upstream because this water can come down. We saw this back in 2015 in Wimberley on the Blanco River. We get these big walls of water that come down these rivers in this type of flash flood situation. So beneficial, but also potentially uh, life-threatening if we get a lot of rainfall out here in a short period of time. A really good point. I mean, you could be camping by the river and it may be raining lightly or not raining at all. All of a sudden, this big wall of water comes down because it's raining upstream and you, and you don't even know what's going on upstream. So you've got to be very careful, careful about that. And uh, yeah, we, we saw, you know, you were talking about the bands earlier, Jeff, and I saw a lot of those over in Louisiana and, and that's going to be moving uh, this way. And also, um, you know, there's another model that, that we're, uh, at least I especially am very curious to see. Uh, tomorrow morning. So you definitely want to watch the podcast tomorrow morning for an update uh, as the HER, it's the, uh, another weather acronym, which stands for High Resolution Rapid Refresh. And, and the HER performs better um, on, on uh, the short run. So tomorrow morning will be about 12 hours out from when Jeff said uh, will be prime time for us tomorrow evening, tomorrow afternoon. So it'll be interesting what the HER shows us. And the, the good thing about the HER is the rapid refresh part of it. It updates every hour, unlike the GFS. So you're getting fresh data in there and uh, it'll be interesting to see what the herd comes up with tomorrow. Yeah, and so moving on to the, the potential for tidal flooding, this continues to be a, a pretty high impact potential up here, especially on the upper coast. Um, so we're, sh we're shifting a little bit here and I wanna be very clear about what we're talking about. So. Previously, we were showing water levels above mean low low water. That's the barnacle level. Now we're transitioning with the Hurricane Center issuing their guidance, uh, water levels above what we call mean high, high water. And that's the normally dry ground along the shoreline. So this is the ground that normally does not get water over it during high tide. And so a little bit confusing, but really for the upper Texas coast, that difference between mean low, low water and mean high, high water is about one to two feet. So this morning we were talking four and a half to five and a half feet of water level rise. And now we're talking two to four feet. Again, this is the same, but this is two to four feet above normally dry ground. And so if you, if you go to the beach and you're at the beach asset access points or the, the base of the dunes, uh, or some of the roads that lead, we're talking two to four feet of water above that. And so this is still some fairly potentially significant coastal flooding that's going to happen here on the upper Texas coast in Galveston Bay. Really, uh, the, the main part of this is going to be Wednesday, Wednesday morning into the afternoon. I'll show you that here in a second. Um, but you can see all the way along the Texas coast from, from the Rio Grande all the way up through Matagorda Bay, Corpus Christi Bay, one to three feet again above normally dry ground. Same thing over here in southwest Louisiana with some enhancement here on the upper Texas coast. And I'll show you why that's kind of the feed and the wind and the fetch is really going to pile the water here in the seas across the upper Texas coast. And so if we take a look again, this is above mean high, high water at some of the specific sites. So this is the front side of Galveston Island. Again, getting up in that uh, three to four foot range above the normally dry ground. Same thing up in Morgan's Point, maybe a little bit higher up here, getting up three, three and a half feet. And then the same thing down at Matagorda Bay, a little bit lower down here. So this is why we do not have a coastal flood warning for Matagorda County and Jackson County and Calhoun counties. These are down in the Matagorda Bay area um, because we're not expecting quite as much of a response here on the tides in that area. We do have the coastal flood warning for Brazoria, 
County. This is the, the coastal part of the county and the islands. So we're talking Quintana Beach, uh, Treasure Island, portions of Freeport, the low-lying portions of Freeport, um, and then Blue Water Highway, that, that, that two-lane road that runs kind of along the Gulf of Mexico there in Brazoria County over towards San Luis Pass. <clears throat> Uh, Galveston Island, Bolivar, we could get some water up over Highway 87 on the east side of Bolivar over towards Rollover. And then in Galveston Bay, Tiki Island, Bayou Vista, portions of San Leon and Bay Cliff, out of those low-lying areas. Seabrook, wouldn't be surprised at all to see some water um, into Seabrook over Toddville Road, into Clear Lake, around the lake, uh, Kima, Boardwalk, you could see some flooding of some of the streets around there. And then eventually up into the Shore Acres area in Southeast Harris County. And so, you know, areas that, that had flooding, maybe with Tropical Storm Beta, Hurricane Nicholas, those are probably the more recent events, uh, similar water levels to that. So Wednesday morning, dark, when it is dark, this water is really going to come up during that period and it's going to wash over some of these places. So make sure if, if you typically have tidal issues when we're talking these levels, you get your vehicles out of there, you move them to higher ground. We will have overwash um, in some of those susceptible areas, uh, west end of Galveston, Missouri County, and Bolivar. So we need to make sure that uh, folks are understanding the water is going to be coming up on the coast. The other thing with this is this may prevent some of the rainfall drainage too. So you, you, you get the water elevated, um, the tides elevated, and you drop some heavy rains on or you bring some bands across especially on Galveston Island and some of the low areas near the bay, it may prevent effective drainage of the rainfall runoff uh, into some of these areas. And so um, just a lot of water is going to be happening down there along the coast uh, as we get into tomorrow and especially on Wednesday. And things should taper off. You can see on Thursday, things really begin to come down. Some of this actually is we do have a full moon at the end of this week. So you can see our tide cycle here gets very large as we get into Wednesday and Thursday. So we're talking uh, about a foot to a foot and a half of actual tide on the coast due to the full moon at the end of the week. So it's all just kind of coming together at the wrong time for us up here on the upper coast. And, and that's going to produce those, those high tides. Thank you very much. We'd like to remind everybody to subscribe and share the Weather Insights YouTube channel. Stay in touch with us and we'll keep you informed of the latest of what's going on in the tropics. Be sure to share it with family and friends so they can stay informed too. And join us for the next Weather Insights podcast.